Salvete Omnes, this is Amelia, also known as the Martian Geek, and welcome back to another episode of Mega Man X3. In the last episode, danger, high voltage, and annoying bosses. But the weapon we got from this guy, we need for at least three other items. And the first of those is in Crush Crawfish's stage. Once again, it's pretty close to the beginning, so I don't really need to cut. Actually, the second and third kind of are too, but they're in a different stage and we'll worry about them when we come to them. For now, well, this platform is not really suspicious looking, but it is different. What we need to do is, well, this is a Triad Thunder. This is Volt Catfish's weapon. It creates a triangle of electricity around you and then corners shoot out bolts like that. It apparently doesn't work too well on these guys. It destroys them, but it doesn't protect you very well. But in any case, charge it up, and it makes an earthquake, which actually can break that platform, and the earthquake sends a couple of sparks along the floor. Come down here, and we get the Hawk Ride Armor. Also, while I'm here, might as well show off some special weapons. The Parasitic Bomb doesn't work on missiles. Yeah, sweet weapon revenge. You guys suck. It locks on latches onto an enemy like that, and if I think it actually blows yeah. Blows up if you leave him there for too long. But if you do that. Oh, uh, let's see. If you do that and there's another enemy on screen, it'll ram the first one into the second one, which is kind of neat. Charge it up. And you get little homing bees. Up to four of them can... You can have up to four of them out at once. Uh, Triad Thunder, we saw a spinning blade I love. Shoots up a couple of blades in kind of an odd arc, actually, but... It's not too hard to hit things with, and... It's pretty powerful. Charge it up and you get a massive blade. That kind of acts like a yo-yo. The weird thing about the charged spinning blade is it always faces the same way. I mean, if you're facing right when you shoot it out, then even if you turn to the left, X will s it will still be going out to the right like that. It's kinda weird. And the other weapons we already saw. But also, now that we have a new ride armor, why not show that off as well? Now we get to choose between Chimera and Hawk. Yes, and apparently stands for Chimera. No. This is my favorite ride armor in the game because it doesn't. It's not. It's similar to the regular ride armor, but you can actually hover, allowing you to extend your jump height or distance. And instead of punching, it shoots missiles and stuff. They're not homing, but still. In any case, that's all we really needed here, so. Let's exit the stage. If I can press the right button, at least. So next up is Tunnel Rhino stage. I believe I already commented on those boulders hanging from the ceiling. Oh, well, now it's finally time to figure out how to drop those boulders down. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to go through the start of the stage with the spinning blade and kind of try to speedrun it. I'm not terribly good at speedrunning, but once again, probably don't have to cut because it won't take too long to get there. See, we're already at the first boulder. Try out thunder. Charge it all the way, and the boulder comes down. And now we can use it as a platform, and it's not blocking our way, so we can get to this heart tank. I do love the spinning blade. Just see how quickly I can get through this stage. It's amazing how f how much faster I can go through a stage when I'm not really being careful or trying to avoid taking damage or anything like that. Sub boss door, but nothing in it. Yeah, it's worth noting that even if you have defeated two bosses and uh, the special bosses are active. They will never appear in stages that you've already beaten. So I already defeated Tunnel Rhino, so it doesn't matter how many times I come back to this stage and which special bosses I haven't beaten, they never will show up in this stage. 
Well, unless I, uh, I start the game over again, of course. And I believe, yes! The second one is right here. Actually, I always used to think there were three, but nope, there are only two. Take this one down. And climb up here. And it's another Dr. Light capsule. Though this one isn't exactly as important as the first two. Enter this capsule, X. Take this sensor upgrade for your helmet. The upgrade will help you to find hidden items based on the satellite readings. You should be able to tell the exact location of items using its ground-penetrating radar. So, yeah. This one might have to speak for itself. But it is indeed the helmet part of X3. And, as we can see, every time you start a stage from now on, at least the Maverick stages, I don't think it happens in the Fortress stages, you get a bit of a map of part of the stage like that, and if any hidden items are around, they'll show up on the map as little flashing dots. Thing is, though, the helmet part is not terribly useful. I mean, it seems like it would be useful to be able to find some hidden items like that, but considering that to even get the helmet part, you need to have already gotten at least two other special weapons, or two other parts as well as two of the special weapons, it has limited use at best. Really, the helmet parts in Mega Man X games pretty much always suck. I think the only ones that didn't were X4s and X8s. And I suppose arguably some of the ones in X5 and 6. But in any case, we're done in this stage. I guess the helmet part might be useful for finding things like the right armor piece in um, Crush Crawfish's stage, which is rather obscurely hidden. Oh yeah, it is also worth noting that now that we have the helmet part, once we have a stage selected, it'll show us what's in there. Like, for example, this stage, we still haven't gotten the heart tank, or change F stands for the F right armor. And actually, speaking of this stage, that is where we're going next. This is the stage of Gravity Beetle. Gravity Beetle stage, I believe, is some sort of airship. A high-tech airship, but an airship nevertheless. And I do this stage 7th because you actually do need his weapon for one thing. There's not too much in this stage, you need another weapon from- Actually! Okay, yeah, now you can see the helmet part in action. And three hidden items, huh? Actually, this stage might not be a bad choice to do early on, because... The stage isn't too hard, and the boss is... Well, probably mid-range in difficulty. I'm not all that great at fighting him, but... He's one of the ones that my brother kind of figured out better than I did. So in this room, if we go up here, we can see a heart tank there. And that heart tank... Ow! Let's land right on the enemy. That heart tank will be blocked if you have not defeated Blast Hornet before coming here. So I guess that... Whoa, lag! That's another reason to do this stage afterward. Am I actually hitting anything? Okay, let's wait for both missiles. And then get hit anyway. I can never remember whether that heart tank that heart tank became unblocked if you defeated Blast Hornet or if you actually defeated Gravity Beetle himself and then revisited the stage. Wow, I'm just landing right on all of the enemies. Mega Man X, you are not Mario. Quit trying to jump on the enemies. Actually, aren't too many different enemy types in this one either, if I recall. Oh, secret boss room. I don't think this stage has an actual sub-boss, so... And we actually are fighting somebody here. I'm a little bit low on health, but I've gotten a decent number of heart tanks, so... Nice to meet you, X. I am Bite. I've been programmed to exterminate you. Yes, this is Bite, and he only really does a few things. He shoots a magnet at the wall that will, will repel you, and you need to not be on the ground when he is, because he will ram you. I'm actually, I don't really have much of a strategy for this guy either. Seems like what works well is to not be on the wall until he starts charging you. Then grab on 
before the magnet pulls off and pulls you off, and jump or air dash over him. That's really all that Bite ever does, except that, which is what he does if you touch the wrong part of his hitbox. Very simple attack pattern. This guy even is more pattern based even than Bit. I didn't expect you had this power. I've lost this time, but I'll crush you next time. So yeah, that guy's also a lot easier than Bit for that reason. His attack pattern is generally easier to deal with. There's not as much junk on the screen at the time. So yeah, that is both of the special bosses defeated. And coming up here, we find the next right armor part. And an odd hitbox for that wall there. Yes, F. F for frog right armor, and can't really show that off right now because there aren't any platforms around to use it. But this is not a water stage, so I wouldn't want to be using it anyway. The frog right armor is only ever really useful underwater. Because it is actually the only right armor that you can take underwater. Everything, all the other ones, will short out if you try. Also, yeah, now we're outside the airship, and we have a nice parallax scroll in the background there, as well as some mist and annoying spiky enemies. And more of these weird things. Hey, yeah, I needed that health refill, though. I would have rather it had gone to my sub tanks. And yet another elevator segment. I pronounced that weird, please. Five, six, seven. Oh, hey! Extra life! I actually forgot that was there. Yeah, four. I thought so. Can nothing else please hit me? I want to fill up my sub tank. Thank you. Eight and nine. And another secret special whatever boss door. Uh, no boss though. They just seem to kind of use those as generic doors between areas. And we actually do have a right armor platform here. So I guess I might as well show off what the frog armor does. Or frog right armor. Not to be confused with the regular armor. Well, it's green, as you can imagine, and it looks kind of funny. And instead of walking, it hops. Which... looks silly and is rather annoying. Also, I believe you get bigger hops if you press B while it's about... or as it's about to hop. But yeah, we are not gonna bother with that. There is no reason to ever use the frog art right armor if there's no water around. Also, these things are apparently falling bullets or something. I don't know, they're like... Mega Man X3 is the equivalent of donut lifts, I guess. Ah. Once again, wanted subtake energy, but oh well. I think we're pretty close to the end of the stage now, actually. And I light him with a cross charge shot. I'm actually not sure whether or not you can shoot their missiles. They'd be kind of hard to hit, though. Now, these crates, pay attention to those because they may be important later. By may, I mean will. But not until I go for the extra items, and that was... bad. Aw, oh, come on, I wasn't charging when I was up there. Yeah, as you can see, their charge shots do a lot of damage. Which is why you really want to avoid them ever having a chance to get them off. In any case, it's time for the boss. Gravity Beetle. He's a beetle, and he doesn't really do all that much with gravity, but... He's not very fast, either. For the first part of the fight, his main attack is throwing this green ball at you. It bounces around frighteningly randomly. Oh, hey, he's already a third of the way down. Yeah, this guy's sort of desperation... Actually, I think this guy has kind of three phases. And now he is onto his third. First phase is just shooting those balls. Second phase, he starts charging at you. And third phase, he creates this sort of black hole-like thing on the top of the screen that, if you're not careful, will, I believe, suck your shots in or something. I'm not sure. It does damage you if it hits you. 
I'm just not really all that good at fighting this guy. The only reason I'm not completely failing is because I had such a large health bar. I believe a strategy that my brother came up with was to send, like, right next to him. And that completely missed. Standing right next to him apparently caused him, or caused the green electricity balls to miss you more often. And speaking of green electricity balls, I haven't seen him use one in a while. Well, what a waste of a cross-charge shot. Yeah, I didn't realize he completely stopped, eh, stopped throwing those after he got to his second or third phase. Presumably third. That does make him easier, though. <laughs> I don't really like having projectiles bouncing around erratically. Especially once he starts throwing out two of them. But Gravity Beetle is down. And we get to turn lovely, pretty, shiny purple. And brown, which kind of ruins the effect. Brown is kind of exactly the opposite of a pretty, uh, pretty color. But in any case, we get Gravity Well, which is kind of a weird weapon. And, once again, not a terribly useful one. It tends to work best against flying enemies, too. Maybe I'll show it off in the next video, but... For now, we have defeated 7 out of 8 Mavericks. There is only one left to go. And him we will take care of in the next episode. So, I will see you then.